check out the new photos. I'm busy. Busy being bored. I'm trying to figure out what my next video is. Clearly, you've been pretty busy. Uh, what are you even doing? I haven't had any good ideas in a few weeks now. I don't know. I feel like there's gotta be something I could talk about, even in this small little town. You know? It's just. I don't know, I just don't feel inspired, creative. Mm, I see. You're bored. Well, you know what they say about boring people. Only boring people get bored. Come on. You have a lot of interest. Look, you could check out these amazing James Webb photos. Like, look at these. Come on. Like, you, th there's got to be something you could do with these videos. Like, I'm sure there's something interesting to talk about even in this small town. You know what? I think you're onto something. Yeah. I, you know what? That's a good idea. I'm going to talk about what's in this town. But that gives me an idea. Alright, let's let's talk about the history of this now. Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. That's today's video. So in today's video, I thought I'd do something a little different. Um, unfortunately, the vlog had to be paused because there was a lot of rain today. So today I thought I'd do a mini history lesson of my town that I live in. So for those who don't know, I actually live in a very small town. So I live in the town of Bullhead City, Arizona. It's a very small little town nestled in between a couple states of Arizona, Nevada, and California. What's interesting is that the town of Bullhead wasn't actually called Bullhead City. It was actually originally known as Hardyville. So Hardyville was actually founded originally in 1864 um, by the Franciscan monk who travels, decided to um, name the town after Hardyville because of the hardy lifestyle here. When it was established, first settled in 1864, a lot of the natives out here actually already lived here and did a lot of farming and you know fishing and other sort of um, hunting in the area. What was interesting is from the first establishment of 1864 to 1833, the majority of the economy here actually ran on the steamboats. So a little bit more on that. Um, but the steamboat industry is very interesting because the steamboats actually came from here and went all the way down up to even to Mexico near Puerto Isla. So I thought that was really fascinating. What was interesting is that this town eventually just became a refuelment town where people traveling out east from Colorado through the old Spanish road or trail out here to California, this town really became the main settlement for a lot of the suppose, industry for um, refuelment. So I thought that was interesting. And eventually there was a bit of mining out here. So Oatman, Arizona was known as a mining town for a couple different mineral, rare mineral, earth minerals, and as well as out here near Nevada, but unfortunately that dried up very quickly and a lot of people moved out to California where most of the mining happened. And it wasn't really decades later until they constructed the dam near the river. So in the Davis Dam is a not as famous as the Hoover Dam a little bit up north, but it's a dam that was constructed from 1942 to um, 1952. And the dam actually eventually created the Mojave Lake here. And the reason I mention this is because, again, the town heavily relies on tourism for its economy. And as the dam was completed, the town size also grew. And eventually, Bullhead City um, was renamed from Hardyville to Bullhead City for the purpose um, that it would draw more crowds, so to speak. And the name actually came about from um, when you actually head out to the lake, there's a famous rock formation that looks like a bull's head. I'll show a clip here about what it looks like. Um, but eventually the point was really to incorporate more tourism to eventually come to the lake and other areas. And well, famously enough, it did work. This plan did work. And as the tourism of the community grew more and more, what I find fascinating is um, it started with steamboats and refuelment as the main economy, but as tourism rose, casinos were also starting to be built in the 1940s and 1920s as well. 
because we live in Nevada, really close to Nevada, gambling is completely legal everywhere you go in Nevada, which very interesting enough is the main reason they open casinos out here. So as Las Vegas was starting to grow in the 40s and 50s, thanks to the Hoover Dam, ironically enough, the Davis Dam also gave rise to a lot of tourism as well. So I thought that was really interesting. But the other piece is that even though that this town doesn't have a lot of history as compared to other Western areas, um, it's fascinating to note that the economy still relies heavily on tourism and the casino uh, economy. So now we have about seven casinos out here. Uh, one is being re remodeled, hopefully, and rebuilt. Um, but the casinos are still what drives a lot of the economy, as well as the tourism that brings from the river and the lake itself. But it wasn't actually until 19, 1984 that Bullhead City officially was incorporated as a town. Um, back in those days, the population was less than 10,000. And it wasn't until recently that, they, that the population boomed to about 40,000 in the whole collective area of Bullhead City, former hobby, and Laughlin. Um, but yeah, um, I think it's interesting that a lot of the tourism still relies on, as you can see nowadays, fishing, kayaking, whitewater rafting, uh, boating, um, as well as a good amount of scuba diving, which I think is very interesting. Um, more on that in another video. Scuba diving in the desert. That's interesting. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys like this little history video. I'm trying to do more interesting videos to kind of spice up the channel but if you guys like this sort of content let me know in the comments below like this video and subscribe stay tuned for all that but until next time i will see you guys next week later